we're going to go ahead and get it started so that we're not, you know, slowing everybody else down. So um, first thing first, first thing I want to say off the top is, you know, congratulations and thank you so much to my brother, Seneca, man, what you're doing is phenomenal with the, uh, the better uh, building better students, man. Like this is, it, I remember you talking about this in its inception and for it to get to this point where it's at now a full blown conference with all these like heavy hitters, all these speakers, yeah, Jeremy at the headliner. That's crazy. Me and you going to talk about having me have to uh, speak right after him, after he just dropped all that fire. But, um, what you're doing is phenomenal. And I'm really thankful to be a part of this journey with you, man. Man, I, I just, I can't thank you enough for what you're doing, man. This is truly going to be a blessing to many, many people and many of these students who are a part of this and uh, anyone who chooses to participate in this. So, man, once again, just thank you for that. Um, so, and go ahead and get right into it. Listen, I know that there are a lot of students on here and y'all not feeling school. Like School is not your thing. You, you not feeling school in no way, shape, or form. you like, if anything, like, why are we forced to do this? Why can't I just do what I want to do and you know, do stuff the way that I want to do it, right? Now, I'm going to get to as to why I believe it's so important for you to gain an education, right, to be immersed in school, right, and take advantage of the time that you're going to spend in school, right? I'm going to get into that in a minute. But the first thing you know, I just want to let you know a little bit about me, right? That's where I want to start off. So my name is Brad Butler II. I'm a youth motivational speaker. Um, I've had the opportunity and the blessing, uh, uh, the blessing to be able to do this full time as far as a educational consultant traveling to uh, different schools across the nation, whether it's in person or virtually. Just, you know, speaking life into students, speaking life into people. And I love what I do. I'm an author. I've written uh, three books, two uh, well, one is a, a hardcover and the other two are uh, ebooks, right? Uh, I've been able to just, you know, work as far as uh, coaching others on how to develop their story, how to get into the speaking industry, things of that nature. Um, and I live a great life. Like, I love what I do, being able to do this full time. I'm married. Um, I, I, I just can't, I can't explain to you how happy I am to be where I'm currently at and being able to do what I'm able to do now. Uh, for a living, right? But before I was able to do this, before I was able to get to this point, uh, I had some hardships, you know, with myself, within my family, like there's a lot of ups and downs that we went through. And like most people, you end up in some crazy positions, right? You end up in some crazy situations. And for me, the position that I kind of ended up in was one night after I had finished working my overnight shift delivering papers and I parked my car in an empty McCaffrey's parking lot. And I found myself just laying down in the back seat of the car in the winter time uh, with a blanket over me, just trying to keep warm. And um, I was at the time, I was a full-time student at Mercer County Community College and I was working two full-time jobs. And I was just trying to make it. I was trying to get to success, I, whatever that was. I didn't even know what it was at the time, but I just found myself laying down in the back seat of my car looking up at the stars and saying to myself, man, this is, this, this, there has to be more life than this. Like, I, it can't end like this. this. This can't be what my life is. All the things that I've gone through, all the things that my family has gone through, like there's got to be more, like there's got to be a light at the end of the tunnel per se, right? And I, I go by the saying of make your next day your best day, right? And I say that because whatever you've done today is not enough to get you through tomorrow. So I'm laying in the backseat of my car thinking to myself, like, man, if I can just get through tonight, like if I can just get through the hunger pains, if I can just get through being tired, right, and just make it to the next day, you know, maybe there's more in store for me. Maybe, maybe there's more that I'll be able to do, right? And I did. I made it to the next day and I just kept on pushing. I kept on working, right? So let me take you all the way back to where I, I, I came from, where I originally started, right? I'm from Jersey City, born and raised, and I moved when I was about eight years old. But before I moved, I found out that my uh, my parents, in the nicest way possible for me to say it, my parents were professional urban pharmacists, right? That's the nicest way for me to put it. So if y'all got it, cool. If it went over your head, don't even worry about it, right? And because of that, you know, there were some hardships that came along with it, right? My father you know, he, he ended up getting incarcerated because, you know, there's only, you know, two ways out of that game. Either you die or you go to jail. Luckily, my father ended up going to jail. He was incarcerated. But when he got out after he did his bid, I was one of the first people he wanted to see. 
And he decided that he wasn't going to go down that path anymore. He wasn't going to live that way anymore. He was going to go down the straight and narrow uh, and just be a good human being uh, and do the right thing for himself and for his family. And because he decided to make that decision, a decision that a real man makes, you know, there were some hardships that came with it because he was used to making so much money. I'm talking about money hand over fist, like, like so much money in a rubber band that is about to snap, right? So he was used to doing that. And he was like, man, I don't know how to do this, like nine to five thing, but I'm, I'm gonna try to make it work. And he didn't stop working. He like, man, I know it's rough and I know it's hard for me, but I'm gonna make my next day my best day, right? So if you're listening in the chat, just put best day in the chat. One time, just put, just put best day in the chat, right? Because that was our motto. Like, that's what we live by. It was literally, we're going to make our next day our best day. Whatever it is what we're dealing with right now, it's not going to stop us or deter us from getting, getting to what we want tomorrow. Like the successes, the goals, the dreams, the aspirations that we believe that we'll be able to have tomorrow, right? So we're going to do the work now so that tomorrow will be even better, right? So he kept on working. My mom, same thing. She was working, doing her thing, making it work going through the struggles, but they were like, no, nah, we're going to make this thing work. We're going to figure this thing out. And then, unfortunately, because of some of those hardships, right, because of money, my mother and my father became victims to heroin, right? They became heroin addicts, unfortunately. And we went through a very bad time, right, as a family. But my mother and my father realized that they got themselves into that situation and they were going to be the only ones who were able to get themselves out of that situation. So they made a, a, a firm, steadfast decision that they were going to make a change in their life, right? Not just for them, but also for their kids, which was me and my sister, right? For the legacy that they wanted to live behind, right? And they changed. My father, he said, immediately, I'm going cold turkey. I'm going to lock myself in the attic. And I'm going to beat this addiction on my own. So he went through the cold sweats. He, he went through the throwing up, you know, helping him into the, uh, the, the bathtub when he needed showers, when he was sick, things like that. Like he went through all of that, right? But he beat the addiction because he said, I'm going to make my next day. That's right. My best day, right? He wasn't going to leave his situation the way that it was. He was going to continue to do whatever he could to make it better. Because as long as he had the opportunity, as long as there was blood pumping through his veins and there was air flowing through his lungs, he said, I'm going to fight for the life that I feel like my, I deserve and my family deserves, right? So I'm going to keep working. And my mom said, okay, I can't, I can't leave my life like this. I got to beat this addiction. So she said, I can't do cold turkey like my husband. But what I can do is I'll go to the NA meetings. So my mom would go to the NA meetings and she would sit there and they would call her up to the podium and she would stand there and say, oh, my name is, and uh, this is my addiction. And these are the things that I've done and I'm not proud of it. And she would cry and get it all out of her system. And a lot of people would ask me like, Brad, how do you know all this information about your family? Like if you were so young around that time, how'd you know? Well, I was there. I, I was there when my father was going through the withdrawals. I was there when my mom was speaking at the podium, telling her story and she would cry, right? I was there sitting on the bench, watching her tell her story. So I was there and I was able to witness and view all of it. And what they didn't realize, unbeknownst to them, I saw the bad, but I also saw the comeback. I also saw the comeback. So when they were down bad and things were looking terrible for them and it just seemed like things weren't going to get any better, I watched them rise like a phoenix, right? I watched them figure it out and put it all together, just put the pieces together like Tetris and make it work. And then I just saw that, that, that drive, that, that, that determination to do better. And all the time that they were going through this, they basically, basically were saying to themselves and showing me that, yo, you got to make your next day your best day right? So they kept on working and kept on pushing and things got better and they beat their addiction and they never went back to that drug again. To this day, my mother and my father are still living and they have never touched that drug again. They've been clean the entire time. So once again, in the chat, I'm going to ask y'all to go ahead, put the, just put the word best day. Just put best day in the chat real quick, right? Because if you want your next day to be your, your best day, then you have to consistently do like, you got to be firm and steadfast on the decisions that you're making. Right. And you can't just think about yourself in the matter. You have to think about who you are also attached to, who your decisions are going to affect. And my mother and my father knew that their decisions were going to directly affect me and my sister, the rest of our family and the trajectory that we plan to go on in our life. So they decided that they were going to make their their next day their best day. 
So they beat that. But when you watch other people go through their go through and they're doing their thing, right? And you see them do it sometimes, you're like, man, that's crazy that they were able to do this. It's crazy that they were able to achieve this or that, right? But then you start thinking to yourself, well, maybe maybe only they can do it, right? Maybe it's like, maybe they're just born innately with that leadership qualities or that resiliency to be able to, uh, to do these things, right? And then I realized that, man, I had my own form of adversity that I had to deal with. So my mother and my father ended up separating when I was about eight years old. And I moved from Jersey City to East Windsor, New Jersey. So I went from the urban community of Jer Jersey City to now the suburban community of East Windsor, New Jersey, right? About two weeks into being in the school system, I ended up in special ed classes, right? I spent 10 years in special ed classes. Even though I fought and I argued and I tried to get out, it didn't work. And I ended up being stuck in those classes for 10 years. And I started to give up on the school system. I started to give up saying that, okay, maybe I am all these things that people are saying about me. Maybe I am dumb. Maybe I am stupid. Maybe I am retarded. Maybe I am remedial. Maybe I'll never be able to go to college, right? Maybe the, maybe the school is just not for me. I'm just not a smart individual. Some people are just born smart and that's not me. I was saying all these things about myself and I was listening to the things that other people were saying about me. I legitimately had teachers that told me, Brad, you can't go to college, right? Like, like, like furthering your education is not a good idea for you. Now, maybe, maybe what you can do is you can go to a trade school or you can just immediately start your career path. But I don't think that college is going to be the best option for you. Listen, I'm here to tell you that you can't allow the labels that people put on you to define you, who define who you are and who you choose to be in your life. Listen, I need you to get to the point where you start taking the labels off and doing the things and living a life that you believe is meant for you. So what I did was I got in contact with a couple teachers, right? There was a few teachers in my school who legitimately believed in me, right? And they said, Brad, you are gifted. You got away with words. You can speak, right? So you can use that. Like there's something that you can do out there. And if you believe that you can go to college, if you say it in your mind that you can do it, then I think you should give it a try. I think you should go out there and at least, you at least owe it to yourself to try and see what life would be like on the other side. Don't worry about how you feel. Don't worry about all the things that are against you. I just need you to actually try and do the work and get out there and give it your best effort and see what happens. See what life is like on the other side side right so I said okay cool and then I said it, it's cool when you get information from people who are not really like a part of your family and stuff like that and it's like all right I get it man it seems like you know you're a teacher so maybe that's just your job you're supposed to say that but then my mom called me one day when I was in middle school and she said Brad get ready get ready Brad I was like oh for what what are we doing she said Brad get ready get ready I need you to get ready because I'm about to graduate from college I said what she said, yeah, Brad, I'm about to graduate from college. I went back to school. So my mom got her bachelor's degree. So we went to the graduation and we, we yelling and cheering for her because we know all the stuff that she went through. And I'm like, man, that's great. Man, that's, that's, that's great, man. I can't believe it. My mom did that. All the stuff that she went through in her past and she still was able to make something like this happen. That's phenomenal. So I go back to school. I'm doing my thing, all right? And then a couple more years pass, and my mom called me back and said, hey, I want you to get ready. I was like, get ready for what? She said, I need you to get ready. I said, ready for what? She said, Brad, I went back to school and got my master's degree. So you got to get ready to come to my graduation. And I'm like, what? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is the same woman, right? The same woman who had a heroin addiction, who had a drug problem, right? Right, who, who, who was out here just, just like wilding for respect, right? You're telling me that she turned her life all the way around and now she not only got a bachelor's degree but she got a master's degree and she got a great paying job and she's doing well in the community she's helping out she's doing community service and things like that that's crazy and then i turned and looked at my father and i'm like oh wow you telling me my father the the, the, the first person who was a, a urban pharmacist like pushing weight moving at work right took over three blocks in jersey city and now you're telling me he has a good paying job working in the industry that he loves like doing th something that's good in the community. He's not harming nobody. Like all he's doing is being a good example of a father and a man to me. And you tell me my mother and my father were able to do these things, right? I started thinking to myself, I said, wait a minute. If my mother and my father can beat a heroin addiction, I can beat the school system. Y'all not hearing me. Come on, because what they showed me was 
Like, it doesn't matter where you're at right now. Like, it only matters where you plan to go. So I'm telling you right now, if you want your next day to be your best day, you got to put in the work. You got to make sure that you are paying close attention to the people that are around you and those that are, are supporting you and want to see you doing well. Only thing you got to do is gravitate and hold on to a couple individuals who legitimately want to see you doing well and see your gift and see that you are actually a talented, special individual. You work hard, right? You got core values, right? You have character, right? And, and they, they admire that. And they see that you can be somebody special if you just hold on and do the work, right? Because they see that you can make your next day your best day. They're not paying attention to the situation that you're currently in or the person that you currently are. They see, they see you for the potential that you have, the person that you can be. But you have to make sure that you honor those individuals. You got to honor those individuals. When you got your mom, your dad, and they're speaking life into you and they're telling you that you're, you can do more and you mad because they on your shoulders and they're like, why are you so hard on me? Why are you so tough on me? Why are you bothering me? Why can't you just leave me alone? It's because they love you. It's because they care about you and they want to see you doing great things, right? It's not because uh, it's not possible. It's very possible. It's possible. That's one of the things that I had to learn. All right. I had to learn that there's a difference between possibility and probability, right? We know what possibility is. Possibility is can something happen, right? Like, can you dunk a basketball? Yes, you can do that. Can everybody do it? No. But is it possible? Absolutely. But probability is the likelihood of something happening. And what I need you to understand is that you greatly increase the likelihood of you being successful in the school system when you gravitate, when you gravitate to those, uh, those teachers and those educators and your coaches and the people who legitimately love on you and want to be there for you. But you have to show them that same respect and love back and show them that you are there and you are willing to work with them so that you can achieve the best that you can possibly be, right? Be the best student that you can possibly be. And I get it. We got some athletes on here too. So be the best athlete you could possibly be as well. So all I'm saying is if you focus on the individuals who legitimately want to see you doing well, you'll be surprised how far you go. I never thought that I'd be where I'm at right now. I never thought I'd be a full-time entrepreneur, speaker, speaking around, around the nation, getting opportunities to speak in different places, whether it's virtually or in person, person uh, writing books. I didn't know that I was going to be able to do something like this. I didn't know that I was going to be able to go to school myself, right? I decided after hearing about my mother, my mother and my father and seeing that my mom was able to go to college, I said, yo, that's that DNA has got to be in me in some way, shape, or form. Her blood courses through my veins too. So I got to have some of that in me. So I said, no matter what my teachers say, no matter what the people say, like, uh, like I had good teachers and then I had some bad teachers who was like, yo, they, they, they didn't really care. They didn't rock with me like that. They weren't taking the time to get to know me. They weren't taking the time to honor my gift. So they were just speaking death on my life. And I get it. Don't worry about them. You can't worry about those people because they're going to be a part of your life in any way, shape, or form anyway. So don't even worry about them people. What I need you to do is make sure that you focus on those who want to see you doing well and they want to see you succeed. You focus on them. So I gravitated to, to those people and I said, how do I get to college? How do I get to college? When I graduate from high school, how do I get to college? Because I think there's a, some success there for me. How do I do it? And they told me, they said, Brad, it's going to be hard. I said, okay, that's cool. I'm not, I'm not afraid of hard work. I'm not afraid of hard work. They said, okay, Brad, it's going to be hard right? And you might be stressed out, right? But I believe that you can do it if you follow these steps. And I said, all right, cool. What are the steps? They said, all right, listen up. These are the steps I'm going to give you. And I broke it down. They gave it to me in a different way, but it's basically this. All right, so it's this BRAS ABC to success, right? Now, all y'all know y'all ABC, so I expect y'all to be able to uh, follow along, right? So the ABCs for success is simple. First one, A. A is awareness. Listen, you got to know where you are and where you intend to go with your life right? What do you want to do? What means the most to you? And why do you want to do it? So the awareness is key. You have got to make sure that you know your starting point and the work that you need to do to get to your ultimate ending point, right? And I said to myself, I said, listen, I want to go to college and I know I'm starting off in special ed classes, right? I know this is where I'm at. I know I'm, I'm, I'm missing the soft skills, reading, writing, basic, ma basic mathematics and comprehension. I know I'm missing some of those things. I know I struggle in some of those areas. So what do I need to do to strengthen those areas that Brad, you're going to need to get a tutor when you get to college. I said, all right, cool. Cool. I'll get a tutor when I get to college. And then Brad, what we're going to need you to do, we're going to need you to come every single day. Every day you got to be in class. So even if you don't hundred percent understand the information, at least some of the information will be absorbed, right? Your subconscious mind will pick up some of the information no matter what. So I need you to show up every day, be ready for class, have your, your, your pencils, your pens, your books, whatever it is that you need, right? And I need you to pay close attention and take notes, right? 
because that is like the, that's going to be the best way for you to be successful in this right you have to at least give yourself a chance and the best way to do that is you got to have awareness awareness is key you got to know where you are starting and where you want to end right the second thing is begin i need you to get started right so for me, it was attending the classes. I had to register, right? I had to do the FAFSA forms, right? I had to meet with the counselors, right? I had to get started. I had to fill out the documentation, whatever it is that they needed for me in order for me to get in. I had to enroll in my first class, right? I had to go into the class, right? I had to be on time. I had to begin. I had to get started. Listen, there's a lot of people in this world, and I promise you, there's a lot of people in this world where they're not successful just because they won't start. They won't start. And here's a little statistics for you, right? Like I can like, I can't tell you what the percentage will be if you get started and you go out there and you start working on that thing that you want to do. I can't tell you what the level the, the, the numbers uh the percentage of success would be for you. I can't tell you, right? I don't know what that would be, but I can tell you that there is a 100 percent chance that you will fail if you never get started. That's a fact. That's a fact. That there is a 100% chance that you will fail if you never get started. If you listen to the people who are trying to tear you down, that they don't they don't speak life into you, right? Those are the people. If you pay attention to them, that you ain't never gonna get started. You ain't. There's a 100% chance you're gonna fail because you're listening to the wrong people. You allowing people to put labels on you, right? Instead of putting the the labels on yourself that you want on you, right? There's people like they 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 call you all kinds of names and call you outside your name, different things like that. But you have to put the labels on yourself. You got to put the labels on yourself and say that you are powerful. You got to say that you're 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 driven. You're courageous, right? That you're brave, right? You can you got to say that you're a generation uh, curse breaker. Like you have to say these these things about yourself. Right? You have to say that you're creating a legacy for yourself and for your family. You got to do these things for yourself because nobody else is going to do it for you. Right. So B, begin. You just got to get started. And then the last one is C. And C is probably one of the most important ones. It's consistency. Because how many times have you seen people get started, but they don't finish nothing, bruh? They don't finish nothing. Like they get started. They constantly say that they're going to do X, Y, and Z, but they don't finish nothing. They don't finish a thing. All they do is get started and stop. They start and stop, start and stop, start and stop. They never go anywhere, right? You, you might as well just be running on a treadmill. Like you can change the speed as much as you want, but you're not going anywhere until you hit the pavement, right? So what I'm telling you is if you want to be successful, you you have got to be consistent. You have got to be consistent with whatever it is that you do. So like I said, with showing up to class, you got to show up every day. With a, with a positive attitude saying, yo, okay, I know I'm not necessarily the best at this or that, but I'm going to show up every day with a positive attitude and give it everything I got, right? Because, okay, well, here's what I can tell you about being consistent, right? If you are persistent, you'll get it. But if you are consistent, you'll keep it. I'll say it again for you. If you are persistent, you will get it. But if you are consistent, you will keep it. I'm trying to get y'all to understand that if you want to get to the next level, right? If you want to achieve whatever it is that you want, listen, I'm not the guy that's going to tell you that you can't go to college. I'm not the guy that's going to tell you that you can't go to NBA or the NFL, that you can't be a singer or a dancer, or you can't be an engineer. You can't be a doctor or a lawyer or a politician. I'm not going to tell you that you can't do certain things. I'm going to tell you that you absolutely can. You absolutely can have and be whatever it is that you choose to be or choose to do, but it's going to require some work. It's going to require some dedication. It's going to require some sacrifice. There's going to be some things that you're going to have to get rid of. You're going to have to let go of some things. You're going to have to go without a couple of things, right? Well, I made a decision when I said that I'm going to do this thing full time as a speaker, that I'm going to put my all into this. I'm going to make this my career path. I had to let go of some things. I had to sacrifice some things. So that means, okay, I'm not going to the club. I'm not partying. I ain't drinking. I ain't smoking. I ain't doing none of that nonsense. What I'm doing is every dime that I have is being invested into my business and every bit of time, every minute, second hour that I have has to be invested into my business in order for me to be as successful as possible. And if you're not willing to do that, if you're not make, willing to make those sacrifices, if you are not willing to work, if you are not willing to be dedicated to this thing, that I, I cannot promise you that you will be successful. I cannot promise you that.
But what I can tell you is if you do the work, if you stay focused, if you and like if your character and core values are together, people see that they understand when your character and your core values are together and you are a person like like they, you are trustworthy, you are a loyal individual that you when you say that you're going to do something, you do it. So I'm telling you, when you apply that to the classroom and you in your 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 uh your, your, your teachers, your professors, when you get to college, when they start asking things of you, right? When they start putting assignments on you and they say, hey, listen, are you going to be able to do this? Can you handle this, right? And you say yes, then they expect you to get it done, right? And if you do that on a consistent basis, that then you become an executor, right? You become an executor and people understand, oh, okay, all right, this like if we if we give this person a task, if we give Johnny a task, we give Jill a task, she gonna get it done, he gonna get it done no matter what's going on in their life, right? You gotta understand that that you are capable of doing more than you ever thought possible. I promise you. But the only way you're gonna get to it is if you get focused, right? If you if you have that 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 focus and disciplined mindset that says, no matter what happens to me in my life. I'm going to accomplish the thing that I set out for. You think that things didn't happen to me? You think that the people didn't pass away? Like you think things didn't go wrong? Like you think I didn't have money issues on this road? Like to, to being a successful speaker? Do you think that didn't happen to me? You're crazy. I'm human just like anybody else, right? And just like things happened to me and adversity struck me, adversity is going to strike you as well if it hasn't already. And what I'm telling you is in order for you to get to the other side of this thing, you have got to be disciplined. You have got to be focused. You got to know where you're going. You have to know that nothing is going to stop you. That for you, your legacy is more important than what's going on right here today. Like you have got to stay focused on the thing that's more that's that the, the thing is the most important. Keep the main thing, the main thing at all times. My legacy means everything to me. That's why I go so hard. That's why I'm constantly working. That's why I'm so passionate when I speak. And you got to understand this passion that I have, like th th this fire that I speak with. It only comes because I know what's on the other side of the work. I know what's coming. I know what like the potential, the lifestyle that we can have, like as, as a community, as a legacy that I want to leave behind, right? What I'm doing for my, my family, right? It's not just for me. I, you got to attach your why to it. Why are you doing this in the first place? If you're going to go to college, if you're going to get a job, if you're going to work in a certain industry, why are you doing it in the first place? Why is it important to you? Because it can't just be about money. It can't just be about cars and clothes. It can't just be about stuff. It's got to be about you wanting to be a betterment for yourself, for your family, for your legacy so that everybody understands that it does not matter where you start it, it, it only matters where you finish and it only matters about making your next day your best day you got to have that inside your heart your soul your spirit and you can't let nobody take that from you because things are gonna get bad like this is gonna be adversity things are gonna come like you heard my story i told you about my story and that ain't even a half of it there's been plenty of things that have happened to me and my family things that tried to throw us off our path but we stay focused the entire time because every time something has gone wrong, we thought about, okay, this is just a bad situation right now, but this ain't gonna last forever. This ain't gonna last forever. We gonna get through this just like we get through everything else. And the motto is always, we gonna make our next day our best day because we can't stay here. We can't stay in this stagnant spot. We can't give up and allow other people to have control over our life, have control over our dreams, have control over the way that we do things. No, we have control. I'm a creator, right? I am a special and gifted individual and you are too, but I need you to start using your gift. I need you to start working. I need you to tap into it. I need you to start listening to the things that are going to keep you motivated and positive about your day and about your life and not allow people to like to beat you down. Because life will do that to you if you let it. But I got, I need you to fight back. I need you to fight back. I, I, come on, I need you to compete. Like when life comes at me with like throwing blows and stuff, I listen, I punch back. Because I ain't got time to just sit around and be, have the woe is me mentality. Like, oh man. Like there was times when I was in school, yo, I failed classes. Like I failed classes when I was in college. I failed classes. But I kept coming back. I kept trying again and again and again until I got my breakthrough because I knew it was coming. Because people like to say, oh man, if, if I just keep working, if I just keep working, man, I, I, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I see the light at the end of the tunnel. No, listen, like I didn't want to see the light at the end of the tunnel. I wanted to be the light at the end of the tunnel for somebody else. 
I wanted to do the work so that they can see that even me, starting where I was at, parents being drug addicts, me spending 10 years in special ed classes, being told what I could and couldn't do, right? Being called out of my name, right? All these crazy things that have happened to me and my family for us to push through that and get to where I'm at now. No, listen, I said, I want to be the light at the end of the tunnel. I don't want to see the light at the end of the tunnel. I don't want to look at the celebrities. I don't want to look at the people that are doing well. I don't want to look at the people that have a nice house. I don't want to look at the people that have a great family. I don't want to look at the people who have great faith in their life. I don't want to look at the people who are doing well. I want to be that. I want to be that beacon of light for somebody else so that they have that opportunity to say, listen, you can't tell me that I can't have it because Brad got it. You can't tell me that I can't live my dreams. You can't tell me that I can't live in purpose. You can't tell me I can't build a legacy because Brad Butler II, after all he's been through, found a way to make his next day his best day. So I'm telling you, in order for you to have it, in order for you to get there, listen, all you have to do is follow these steps. Follow those steps that I gave you, right? The ABCs uh, to success. Awareness, begin, consistency, right? That will get you where you need to be, I promise you. If you don't wanna be a speaker, it's cool. If you wanna do something else, that's cool. You can apply it to that too. It's up to you. It's your life. It's your legacy that's on the line. It's not mine. I'm doing the work. I'm doing with the best that I can with what I got. I need you to do the same. I need you to do the same exact thing with your life. So listen, I wanted to give you guys this, man. It's a story that I heard and um, might've heard it before, might not, it's all good. But I wanted to tell you this story, right? It's, uh, it's called The Mentor Story. And I heard it a while back and I just thought it would be really important to share it with you guys because I felt like it, it really, it, it, will, it would touch somebody, would help somebody if they're going through a, a bad situation because I've been there before. When I heard the story, I said, yep, that's it. That's it. Every time something's not going right, this is what I kind of turn to. So let me get into it. There was, um, there was a guy who lost everything, cars, clothes, house, his family, his kids. He lost everything, all his money, he lost everything. And he was doing really well before. He had a lot of money, but he lost everything. And he got to the point where he was homeless. He was actually living under a bridge. And when his friends found out that that's where he was at, man, he was homeless. So he went to go visit him. He said, hey, man, man, what are you doing down here? And uh, the guy said, oh, man, I, um, I lost everything. I don't exactly know what happened, but I lost everything. But my wife left me. She took the kids. Uh, the house is gone. The car is gone. All the money is gone. I have nothing anymore, man. I, I'm, I'm at wit's end. And um, this is it. This is my life now. And his friend said to him, he said, listen, I've known you for a while, man. I'm not going to let you go out like this. He's like, I know of a mentor who has helped thousands of people get their life back on track, right? People who have dealt with the same situation that you have. I think if I take you over to meet him, he could help you to get yourself you know, back on track. He said, are you willing to go with me? He said, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, let, let's go. I, I, I want to get my life back on track. He said, okay, great. Let's go. So he takes the guy down to the mentor's place and he gets down to the, uh, the mentor, mentor's place and uh, he goes in and he said, hey, listen, um, I hear that you are the, the mentor that's helped thousands of people to fix their life. Listen, my life is in shambles right now. I lost my house, my car, my clothes, uh, my money. I lost everything that I had. And I just, I, I need your help. I need you to help me fix it. And the guy says, wow, that's crazy. The mentor says, wow, that's, that's a crazy story. He said, listen, I, I apologize that you came all the way down here, but um, I can't help you fix that. He said, the guy says, what do you mean? What do you mean you can't help me fix that? He said, listen, I'm sorry. I can't help you fix that. And he says, so I came all the way down here for nothing? Man, this is crazy, man. Like, I don't believe this. The mentor says, oh, wait. No, no. Like, I can't help you to fix those problems. But there is somebody in this building that can help you to, to fix that, right? To fix all the issues that you have. He said, oh, why didn't you say that in the first place? He said, well, do you want to meet the guy? He said, absolutely. Come on, take me to, take me to meet him. Take me to meet the mentor. He said, all right, come on, let's go. He said, all right, come on, we got to go over here. See this little this door over here? He said, yeah, I see. He said, all right, come on, I'm going to walk you down. It's a staircase. He said, oh, yeah, no problem. So the guy opens the door, the mentor opens the door. And as the mentee looks down the steps, he can see there's a really, really extremely dark stairway. And 
there's no light at the bottom. It's just a dim light at the very top of the stairway where they're where they enter at. And he says, down there? He said, yep, down there. We got to go. He says, all right, come on. He says, all right. He starts walking down the staircase with the mentor in front of him. And he's like walking him down, guiding him down the steps. And as he goes further and further down the steps, it gets darker and darker. So he continues walking. Now the darkness is by his knees. He keeps on walking. The darkness is around his waist area. And he starts to get nervous. Like, man, um, listen, I, I, I'm not trying to be funny or anything like that, but I just met you and you got me going down this dark stairwell. Uh, I'm, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little nervous. And the mentor says, no, it's all right. I get you. I understand. But just keep on walking. I, I, the, the person that you want to see is down here. He can help you. So if you want to fix your life, you got to keep going. So he says, all right, fine. So he keeps on walking down the staircase and now the darkness is up by his shoulder area. And he says, okay, listen, I'm not comfortable with this, right? This is kind of bothering me. He said, I get it. But if you want to fix all your problems, then you have to go down these steps. So he keeps on going and now the darkness is above his head and he can't even see his hands in front of his face. And he's at the bottom of the stairwell. And he says, okay, we're at the bottom of the stairwell, but I don't see anything and I don't see anybody. It's just me and you down here and you stop talking. I'm confused. Can you please help me? Like, I, I, I think I need to go back up the staircase. So he's frantic and he starts moving around and the mentor can hear him like getting frantic and moving around. So he grabs the guy, he grabs the mentee and he pulls him away from the staircase, slings him to the other side of the room and he bounces into a wall. And he's like, are you crazy? What are you doing? Like, I can't see down here. And, and you're, you're like throwing me around down here. And like, I'm supposed to trust you. And I just met you. And before he could finish his sentence, the mentor flicks on the light switch. switch. Flicks on the light switch and the room is illuminated with light after it was just dark for a couple minutes. So it takes him a while to adjust because he's rubbing his eyes and he's looking around trying to see what's going on. And when he's able to see properly, he sees that all four of the walls around him are mirrors. So he says, the mentee says, so you, you brought me all the way down here in this dark basement to look at some mirrors? You said that you were going to help me to fix my life. And the mentor says, you're right, I am. You said that you wanted to meet the person that would help you to fix all the issues that you have, to fix your life, to get your wife back, to get your kids back, the house, the car, the clothes, the money, all the things that you said that you wanted. If you want to get all those things back, I need you to have a conversation with the man in the mirror. Because what you need to understand is that change is as far as the closest mirror. Change is as far as your closest mirror. Listen, what I need you to understand is that all the areas of your life that you feel like aren't going right, right? That you don't have what you think you should. You're not at the level that you think you should be at, the level of success, the amount of money, whatever it is that you think that you should have or you want to have. And you're starting to blame other people, right? You're starting to blame other things that have gone on. What I need you to understand is that it starts with you. You got to have a conversation with the man or the woman in the mirror and start making changes today because it doesn't happen any other way. I need you to get focused. I'm talking about dead focused on you, laser focused on you and the things that you want, the successes that you want to have. And the only way for you to get it is to have that conversation with the man or the woman in the mirror. So listen, I'm going to leave you all with this because I believe that in order for you to receive, get to all the successes that you want in life, man, you got to think about your life, your legacy, right? Your life, your legacy. So I'll leave you with this. As I close, listen, be careful of your thoughts because your thoughts become your words. Be careful of your words because your words become your actions. Be careful of your actions because your actions become your habits. Be careful of your habits because your habits become your legacy. And that is how the world will, will remember you. Listen, my name is Brad B. Rad Butler II, and I encourage every last one of you to make your next day your best day. Peace. Appreciate y'all. And if we have... Uh, Anyone who wants to uh, talk on here, we can use the comment section. We can do that if we want to. But if not, then I believe we are good to go. All right. I think we good. So listen, thank y'all. Appreciate y'all for listening. Y'all make your next day your best day.